Robin Hood is a heroic outlaw in English folklore who, according to legend, was a highly skilled archer and swordsman. Traditionally depicted as being dressed in Lincoln green, he is often portrayed as robbing from the rich and giving to the poor. Alongside his band of merry men, Robin Hood became a popular folk figure in the late medieval period and continues to be widely represented in literature, films, and television. The first clear reference to Rhymes of Robin Hood is from the 1377 poem Pierce Plowman, but the earliest surviving copies of the narrative ballads that tell his story date to the second half of the 15th century or the first decade of the 16th century. In these early accounts, Robin Hood's partisanship of the lower classes, his Marianism, and associated special regard for women, his outstanding skill as an archer, his anti-clericalism, and his particular animosity towards the Sheriff of Nottingham are already clear. Little John, much the miller's son, and Will Scarlet all appear, although not yet made Marion or Friar Tuck. It is not certain what should be made of these latter two absences, as it is known that Friar Tuck, for one, has been part of the legend since at least the later 15th century where he is mentioned in a Robin Hood play script. In popular culture, Robin Hood is typically seen as a contemporary and supporter of the late 12th century King Richard the Lionheart. Robin being driven to outlawry during the misrule of Richard's brother John while Richard was away at the Third Crusade. This view first gained currency in the 16th century. It is not supported by the earliest ballads. The early compilation, A Jest of Robin Hood, spelled R O B Y. Edward, and while it does show Robin Hood accepting the king's pardon, 
He later repudiates it and returns to the Greenwood. The oldest surviving ballad, Robin Hood and the Monk, gives even less support to the picture of Robin Hood as a partisan of the true king. The setting of the early ballads is usually attributed by scholars to either the 13th century or the 14th Although it is recognized, they are not necessarily historically consistent. The early ballads are also quite clear on Robin Hood's social status. He is a yeoman. While the precise meaning of this term changed over time, including free retainers of an aristocrat and small landholders, it always referred to commoners. The essence of it in the present context was neither a knight nor a peasant or husband spelled H U S B O N D E but something in between. Artisans such as millers, were among those regarded as yeomen in the 14th century. From the 16th century on, there were attempts to elevate Robin Hood to the nobility and in two extremely influential plays. Anthony Monday presented him at the very end of the 16th century as the Earl of Huntingdon, as he is still commonly presented in modern times. As well as ballads, the legend was also transmitted by Robin Hood games or plays that were an important part of the late medieval and early modern May Day festivities. The first record of a Robin Hood game was in 1426 in Exeter. But the reference does not indicate how old or widespread this custom was at the time. The Robin Hood games are known to have flourished in the later 15th and 16th centuries. It is commonly stated as fact that Maid Marian and a jolly friar entered the legend through the May games. The earliest surviving text of a Robin Hood ballad is the 15th century Robin Hood and the Monk. The 
This is preserved in Cambridge University manuscript ff.5.43 Written after 1450, it contains many of the elements still associated with the legend from the Nottingham setting to the bitter enmity between Robin and the local sheriff. The first printed version is a jest of Robin Hood, 1500, a collection of separate stories that attempts to unite the episodes into a single continuous narrative. After this comes Robin Hood and the Potter, contained in a manuscript of 1503. The Potter is a markedly different in tone from the Monk, whereas the earlier tale is a thriller, the latter is more comic, its plot involving trickery and cunning rather than straightforward force. Other early texts are dramatic pieces, the earliest being the fragmentary Robin Hod and the Sheriff of Nottingham in 1475. These are particularly noteworthy as they show Robin's integration into May Day rituals towards the end of the Middle Ages. Robin Hood and the Sheriff of Nottingham, among other points of interest, contains the earliest reference to Friar Tuck. of neither the monk nor the potter are included in the guest, and neither is the plot of Robin Hood and Guy of Gisborne, which is probably at least as old as those two ballads, although preserved in a more recent copy. Each of these three ballads survived in a single copy, so it is unclear how much of the medieval legend has survived, and what has survived may not be typical of the medieval legend. It has been argued that the fact that the surviving ballads were preserved in written form in itself makes it unlikely they were typical. In particular, stories with an interest for the gentry were by this view more likely to be preserved. The story of Robin's aid to the poor knight that takes up much of the chest may be an example. The character of Robin in these first texts is rougher edged than in his later incarnations. In Robin Hood of the M- and the Monk, for example, He is shown as quick-tempered and violent, 
assaulting Little John for defeating him in an archery contest. In the same ballad, much the miller's son casually kills a little page in the course of rescuing Robin Hood from prison. No extant ballad early actually shows Robin Hood giving to the poor, although in a jest of Robin Hood, Robin does make a large loan to an unfortunate knight, which he does not in the end require to be repaid, and later in the same ballad, Robin Hood states his intention of giving money to the next traveler to come down the road. I just got a text and I didn't turn my volume down. Where was I? Traveler to come down the road if he happens to be poor. Within Robin Hood's band, medieval band medieval forms of courtesy rather than modern ideals of equality are generally in evidence. In the early ballad, Robin's men usually kneel before him in, dis in strict obedience. In a chest of Robin Hood, the king even observes that his men are more at his bidding than my men be at mine. Their social status as yeomen is shown by their weapons. They use swords rather than quarter staffs. The only character to use a quarterstaff in the early ballads is the potter, and Robin Hood does not take to a staff until the 17th century, Robin Hood and Little John. The political and social assumptions underlying the early Robin Hood ballads have long been controversial. It has been influentially argued by J. C. Holt that the Robin Hood legend was cultivated in the households of the gentry and that it would be mistaken to see in him a figure of peasant revolt. He is not a peasant, but a yeoman, and his tales make no mention of the complaints of the peasants. Such as oppressive taxes. He appears not so much as a revolt against societal standards as an embodiment of them. Being generous, pious, and courteous, opposed to stingy, worldly, and churlish foes, 
Others, scholars have, by contrast, stressed the subversive aspects of the legend and see in the medieval Robin Hood ballads a plebeian literature hostile to the feudal order. 